Welcome to the second studio design and architecture show hosted by two architects, myself, David Lee and Marina Bordarone. This week, it's just the two of us in a fellow designer episode. What is a fellow designer episode? On this podcast, we have different types of episodes. We have ones that are just casual conversations called After Hours. We have helpful, informative episodes for other designers, our fellow designers, wink, wink. And then we have ones that are also informative, but more for clients. And those are called Design Companion episodes where we cover things like how to hire a contractor, how to hire an architect, what is the building process, what's happening right now, you know. <laughs> who am I? Yeah, who am I? <laughs> um, today's topic is uh, architectural thesis at the undergraduate level. Um, we're going to talk about uh, a few different points. We're going to talk about what is a thesis in architecture, what makes it different from other uh, typical projects? What is the difference between thesis and capstone and dissertation? Um, what is the overview, an overview of our experience and what we went through in terms of like the process of, of producing an architectural thesis when we were back in school? Uh, and also the question, which is all, all of this came from, uh, which was from a listener, and their question was like, how do I come up with a thesis topic or subject? Uh, they are a fourth year and they wrote in saying, I'm a fourth year. I have thesis next year, you know, and we get this question a lot. Actually, I have my peers and other people I see, and they seem to know what they're doing next year. I don't like, how do I figure that out? Uh, help. So we answered that as well. Right. Yeah. This is, I hope the last time I'm talking about thesis, <laughs> oh, you will know oh after you God. all go through that when it's, done that's it it's behind no <laughs> it's not, not that's not the point of thesis <laughs> no no, no the... i'm joking i'm joking no i mean hopefully we answer and, and give some um, insights and, and reassure a few out there it's a scary process no one really know what they're doing throughout so don't feel like you're alone you're not people who know what they're doing they don't they don't Okay. They okay. Don't until this is they start... oddly specific for the introduction. <laughs> Do you want to go back, jump into the recording, and then reveal some inner thoughts you have about people being lost? No, but you just say you, you have people reaching out because they're they're lost, they're scared of thesis because they don't know. Right. I'm saying, no one knows. Okay. Don't be scared. That is true. Everybody that is, true. is scared. We do also talk about if you see other four fears and they're set on what they're doing right you should question that yeah and even yeah. if they're starting fifth year and they said they know what they're doing no they're not <laughs> let them do it and okay. then you see okay. that they don't know what they're doing okay. okay good um so yeah that's the topic of this week's recording sponsors hey architects what are you doing to optimize your business what tools are you using to manage your office resources people and projects maybe you have some software that you're using but it's probably old and outdated are you really getting a clear understanding of where your office is probably not so here's a software that will enable you to easily track your budgets employee hours invoices contracts and milestones and it's called monograph monograph is different because it was designed by architects people who learn from first-hand experience what architects need to manage their offices monograph has a beautiful interface it's smooth it's easy to use and they also have this tool called the money gantt which allows you to see immediately whether or not your project is on track or getting over budget monograph is great for small to medium offices who need to manage multiple people so start your fully functioning monograph trial today by clicking the link in our episode notes domestic appliances have an important functional tactile but also visual role in the home you want to make sure that you have the best brand and we definitely suggest to use Mila. Mila combines German craftsmanship, fascinating innovation, and elegance with a single promise of Ima Bessa, a German phrase which means forever better. Mila is the world's leading manufacturer of premium domestic appliances. For designers and consumers, this means the peace of mind of knowing that choosing Mila is a good decision with their appliances lasting the equivalent of 20 years or more. Whether used for laundry care, vacuuming, or in the kitchen, their products are subjected to the strictest stress and endurance tests before they come to market. Mila products possess sustaining design and purposeful technology, making them appealing to designers, builders, consumers, but also professional institutions. Check out Mila by clicking the link in our episode notes. This is The Second Studio with myself and Marina. Here we go. So before we start going on on, on this, this topic that's very much dear to David, um, why would we be talking about thesis on this podcast? Tell because me. Because someone asked us about it, that's why. No, it's because, uh, for those who don't know at all, it's very common uh, for the last year in undergraduate school, an architecture undergraduate school, for the project to be a thesis project. Um, and there's different 
it's, it's not always a thesis, but that's often the case. So it's funny because I feel like in the U.S. maybe it's not often a thesis, but mm. I don't know. I'm curious to know in other countries if it's most likely that. I feel like here there is a lot of freedom as to like what school can do maybe yeah. in during fifth year, mm -hmm. which you know like in France any school in fifth year would have um, their like final big project. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I, I think maybe for the people who are completely uninitiated, it's confusing because thesis is typically associated to associated with other professions that are more research based, maybe more in the sciences, or something that's very heavily uh, heavily uh, relies on research. And architecture for the outsider, you know, like why would you do a thesis for architecture? I don't, I don't get that. It's 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 an odd thing. Um, but anyway, so in the typical like. Uh, undergraduate process because the, the conversation is going to focus at, at that level of, of education the final year is either a thesis project or a capstone project so uh, we're going to kind of talk about this from our perspectives and our experiences which is to say that um, we both went through five-year programs so you have years one two three four your four usually is when people study abroad and they go to whoever <laughs> and they, <laughs> they party and they don't do anything. What? Well, and, well, well, <laughs> speak for yourself. I worked, I worked my butt off uh, during my fourth year. And then uh, fifth year is when you have uh, most often one big project for the entire year. And it's different, uh, first of all, because it lasts an entire academic year as opposed to previous years one through four, you'll do a bunch of smaller projects, right? And... Um, it, Yeah. So you were saying that um, depending on what school you might be in, you either have what you call a capstone project yeah. or a thesis. Those are kind of the two options yeah. for f fifth year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's fair to say that most undergraduate architecture programs in the United States, the final year is a bigger project, mm -hmm. but it might not be a thesis. It could be what's called a capstone. And we're going to kind of quickly talk about the difference between a capstone, a thesis, and a dissertation, um, both specific to architecture and broad scope. So for architecture, there's oftentimes, oftentimes a capstone project, and that is not a thesis. So a thesis, as everyone probably knows, it's, if you think about it in, in the terms of writing a paper, there's some kind of argument or critical statement being mm -hmm. made, right? And you have to prove that. Um, argument you take to prove a position. Those you take a position, right? A capstone project is different from a thesis because you don't have to take a position. Mm. A capstone project is just about doing, let's say, a more typical project, um, but doing it really, really, really well and very thoroughly. So the way I kind of look at it is that in a thesis uh, studio project, you'd have to spend some amount of um, time, energy, resources toward researching, toward developing a thesis, developing an argument, having a critical take. Um, when that goes away, that energy is replaced with just doing a typical project, but much, much better. So th in that sense, would a thesis project means that you are somehow trying to push the question further with your uh, design response? Yeah, so this is where it gets interesting. Let me let me further explain the, the capstone thing first. Right. Um, so, for example, a capstone project, it could be any type of building. Okay, it's not building type specific, but you would develop it much further. And a lot of times, developing further doesn't just mean developing it further in the academic school sense of having nice renderings, having beautiful graphics, mm -hmm. like more student-oriented um, productions. Uh, it would typically mean like you're going to get into a deeper understanding of structural engineering or facade design, things that, that start to bleed over into what would have to take place in a professional setting. So a bit more technical, maybe. A bit more technical, maybe, yeah. Or maybe there's a further uh, development of the sustainability and the energy uh, consumption of the structure or how much energy it gets back. Or the, even the documentation, like going through a uh, more, more traditional process Uh, or executing more traditional documents and professional setting of like construction documents. So you're not going to okay. get through yeah, yeah, full yeah. CDs, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. but 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 that's that's kind of it. So so just to, because I come from France and that's not how things are done there. We just all have thesis and that's it. Like, there's no <laughs> alternate options. I'm not trying to understand here. So d d does you know a school that does either capstone or thesis project? Is that typically that they choose to do either or because of their philosophy about the way they teach architecture 
or is it completely random and up to whoever's chair at the moment? Like, what's have you noticed mm -hmm. that there is some sort of rational behind the choice? Um, I think it's both is the answer. Um, it, it is an extension of the school's philosophy, right? Okay. And so, uh, because they are philosophically different approaches yeah, yeah, to yeah. education. And yeah. if the final year is meant to be very important, then it's, it's, it is critical for the school to decide kind of collectively, let's say, like, what do we want to be doing here? Um, one of the primary reasons for having a thesis instead of capstone is that it's more about critical thinking. It's more about innovation. And you're trying to get the students prepared to go on and graduate and then produce something that's going to innovate and change the world. Okay. More like that level, okay. generally speaking. And capstone maybe is more like maybe the person being more prepared to enter their workforce. I mean, uh, so not, so yeah. it's not really like, let's say there is one that's more variable than the other, one that's higher than the other. It really depends... On what the, what value is to the school. What value is to the school or is to the future architects. Yeah, say, exactly. Right? And, and some schools also, they have... I mean... If, if, if anyone listening who's like, let's say, a third year in school, you've realized by now, probably if you're at a larger institution, that it's very... The definition of architectural education is very broad and very vague and very squishy and very murky, and it's just, just borders are always changing. So at a lot of times you'll find a school who um, that uh, says, like, on paper, we do a thesis fifth year. But when you go and look at their uh, fifth year thesis student work, it's all over the map. Half of them are not really theses, you know, um, not just because of their execution, like, categorically. No, it's, not, it's not a thesis. Like, what are you talking about? So, yeah. but but Right, right, right. But yeah, these are the differences. Um, to, I'm going to go back and answer your question about the architecture thesis in a second. But I do wanted to explain the talk about the term dissertation, because what people should understand too at the under for folks in the undergrad level is that a thesis is typically associated in the United States with a master's degree, a graduate level uh, coursework and and diploma. Right. Mm -hmm. So you do a thesis when you're getting a master's of architecture. Um, now, what hap what has happened is that the thesis, at, I don't know when, at some point, kind of like trickled down into undergrad undergraduate level two uh, also. So like the thesis you do in undergrad when you're fifth year is like. It's a teaser. It's not really a thesis because you don't really have the time there's a lot of things you don't have in order for it to be a thesis. You don't have the time. You don't have the support. You don't have. It's not. It's not a real well, thesis. I, I think it, you, you know they probably call it that way too because you start dipping your toes into a different territory, like a different approach to design. Yes, a different right. uh, way uh, of thinking. Yeah, and so it's sort of like you're you're taking all of the aspects of a true master's level thesis, and you're kind of like taking all the elements, extracting the, the most essential elements out of it, and then trying to, to reproduce that at the uh, undergraduate level. Um, you know, so it's kind of like a lightweight version. I'm not saying that you leave out entire portions of the thesis, but it, that that's important for people to realize. That's also why a lot of times <sighs> thesis for, for fifth year students can become easily overwhelming yeah. because you're trying, you're, you are really dipping into a process that's meant to be lasting a little bit longer and meant to be happening when you're probably older, more mature, and more experienced. Uh, but the difference between thesis and dissertation is something we should talk about because these two words are kind of used interchangeably and incorrectly. Um, at least within the States, and we were talking about this before, and so you can kind of describe why it's different in, in, in France or in Europe. In the States, thesis applies to the master's level and a dissertation applies to, to, to the doctoral level. And I'm just saying that because these terms are sometimes switched around. Like you'll find like a thesis doctoral, you know, whatever paper, but it's actually a dissertation is what's done at, at that end. And a dissertation, as I'm describing, is different because... A thesis and a dis dissertation both require you having some kind of position, a statement, an argument, and et cetera, right? And then there's research to support that, and then there's like a conclusion, and then there's some kind of review process in one way or another. Like there's outside people looking at it. That's part of it, right? A dissertation is distinguished because you're doing, in that case, like original research. Like you yourself or your team are doing actual like field research 
right? So if you think in terms of the sciences, like you are doing the research or your team is. In the case of a thesis, you are not actually a lot of times doing the, the research. You're relying on research that's been done, you know, papers that, papers that have been written uh, and whatever else to prove your argument. And that's like a distinguishing factor. So like there's levels to the game, you know, there's like the mini thesis of undergrad, there's a true thesis of master's, and then there's a dissertation um, at the PhD level. And like, you know, the, the, the leaps and the distances between the three are, are huge, you know like you're doing a dissertation it, it, it phd uh, candidates it takes them five years to execute their six years it, it's a different thing altogether yeah i mean in french i think it's it's similar it's just it's kind of confusing because they keep switching the words and it's like why why are we all agreeing on this uh when so when you're in fifth year in france you're technically actually doing a master you did three years of what's called license L1, L2, or 3 and then you have M1 and M2, which is Master 1, Master 2. So you graduate with Master 2. Um, so during your Master 2, <laughs> so you're, you're, you're doing a, a, what's called a PFE, which is the equivalent of the thesis here, which is the, the, fro the, pro the, the project of final study. And Master 2 is like fifth year? Master 2 is okay. fifth year. Okay. And then after you do fifth year, um, you go into doing like um, more like research, like you know, like PhD kind of level. And this is like true, true research. And you do, you do, you actually do a thesis then. And the thesis could take maybe two to three years mm -hmm. to find the answer to your thesis. Like mm -hmm. it's an argument, you're ongoing, you know, and, and writing and you're doing research with it. So it's, an, an it's super confusing. confusing. <laughs> yeah, super confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's use the same words, but not for the yeah. same thing. So, yeah. <laughs> like but, or, but it's the same, but it's the same, you know, yeah. like, the, the chronologically, way, it's the chronologically same. Chronologically, yeah. it's the same, and and even like we, once we're gonna start talking about like what is a thesis and and the process with it, it's the same thing. You know, we we're kind of quickly describing all of that because again, I think if you're in, if you're a fifth year and you find yourself struggling, you're 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 experiencing again a process and a project that has is like this is its ancestry in a certain sense and so if you feel pressure that's probably because you're you're starting to to feel some of the above you should feel pressured <laughs> if you don't feel pressured in fifth year when thesis come uh either you're a genius or you don't understand what thesis is but it should trigger like emotions and feelings and fear a little bit because sure, it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's a big thing it's a new thing and it's not easy so i think it's good to talk about like what's the difference between uh a fifth year thesis versus uh, and if you substitute word the word thesis uh, the thesis statement right uh, with uh, the term argument um or position like what's the difference between that and the argument or position you'd have in a typical architecture project, which is kind of like the, the question you were asking a few minutes ago. And it's a super good question. Um, the way I would describe the difference is that any architecture project, you know, we've talked extensively about the why, how, what, and the problem and solution and asking a question and then finding an answer and this kind of like before after thing. Any architecture project should have some kind of argument or statement behind it that is project specific, right? That that applies to the the specificities of that project, of its of its type, of its so the building type, let's say, the program, its location, the people it's for, the scale of the project, right? There will be critical statements that are specific to all of those things. The difference between that, though, and a thesis, architectural thesis, is an architectural thesis applies to not just one project. It is a critique, in some ways, of the... It's, it's field-wide, uh, right? It's the entire profession or field of architecture, and you're taking a stance within that scope, as opposed to just this one I don't, medical center I'm producing. Yeah, it's like the question is broad. The answer could be specific to a site or location. The, but the, the, but the project the, could be, yeah. The project, but the question is broader than that. The question and the and the statement you're making, right? The critical statement is is broader. It it it's a it is a critique of an observation of like the entire uh, field of architecture, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what's interesting uh, about these distinction uh, distinctions is that a really good architecture project, just one project, will have within it 
uh, both a, I would say, like a project-specific thesis and an architectural thesis. Or it'll have a project-specific thesis that somehow ties into, relates to a, a larger, broader thesis and critique about architecture, right? This is what distinguishes, um, we can say, like, really, 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 really good buildings and good architecture from, like, capital G, capital A, great architecture that's movement-creating, world-changing, right? Those types of architecture uh, have both. Um, it, yeah. And sometimes, you know, the, the larger theories, the larger architectural thesis um, actually overpowers the specificities, specificities of a project. And that's why it's like, you know, it's a good like architectural thesis expression, but it doesn't function as you know, a hospital it doesn't function as a, uh, a school, right? It like, doesn't make sense at all, but it's performing in other ways. So that's, that's kind of the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we can do is sort of describe the experiences that we went through because the, the, the initial question for this conversation was how do I develop a, how do I come up with a topic or a question for thesis, right? Because the, the person who wrote in was like a fourth year student. Um, so the school that I went to, five-year program, fifth-year thesis projects, and what happens during fourth year, yeah, fourth year, and I believe they're still doing it, is actually the fifth-year teachers write a studio per perspective. And basically, it's a it's a short kind of paragraph, a couple paragraphs, and where the teachers describe what their studio is going to be about, mm. the focus of the studio. Now, sometimes, because um, I went to a big school with like, I think, each class was a couple hundred students, so that's, I don't know how many different teachers that is. So, so, so sometimes you'll find that the, the 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 focus in quotes is either a particular building type, like we're going to focus on housing, or we're going to focus on multifamily housing, even more specifically, or it's more theory based, like we're going to focus on how um, fabrication technologies might impact architecture, or or should impact architecture, or um, uh, communication technologies have impacted culture at large, and what does that mean for architecture? You know, which is kind of actually suited to the uh, that I took. Um, but so that happens during fourth year. So that the fourth year students kind of have to, well, they have to apply to all these different thesis um, studios, and they rank them like one to five or whatever, right? And so it's important for at that level, at fourth year, for a student to have some kind of understanding of what they want to do, right? If I know I want to do a housing project, well, I'm going to take the housing studio. If I'm not sure, and I sign up for the housing project uh, studio, housing studio, and I get to fifth year, then I realize I don't really want to be doing housing. Well, then I've I've screwed up. So it's a little bit difficult because um, even as early as fourth year, uh, you're you're kind of asked to have some kind of rough direction of what you want to do the following year interesting i was trying to re trying to revive my memory yeah it's been a while but you know i have a few gray hair and it's been a while <laughs> um to what happened to me when i was in uh, about to start fifth year well this i remember that the studio that i took for my fifth year it wasn't i mean we had to apply or like select the studio and the teachers we wanted mm -hmm. but i don't think they they wrote uh did a perspective or whatever you you called it to kind of describe what they were going to be about um the one i selected we they had a site the studio had a site they already know it was like this island on the sand and that was going to be the, the site for everybody's thesis project mm -hmm. but they didn't tell you what the thesis the theme the building was going to be on that site mm -hmm. um I don't remember the other studios if they are functioning the same way. To be honest, um, I have to say I was pretty isolated from <laughs> from all of the other studios by choice. It's just too much politics between okay. <laughs> between them. I was just not interested, so I kind of looked at what seemed to me uh, to make the most sense. And so we picked the studio, and then uh, looking back, actually, uh, I think it was kind of interesting to have chosen a studio that just had a site, yeah, but had nothing else, yeah, and. You know, I do think that maybe it helped the process in a way because we were a group of 15 students in the studio and we were sharing resources about that piece of land. Mm -hmm. um, but 
you know, to help, like, you know, be faster at it, like make the site model or have the computer things, like, you know, just kind of like help that, that, that portion right. of the, the, the legwork, right? I can guarantee you that if 10 people were assigned to make a site model, only two people actually made it. It's always like that. Yeah. It's always like that. And, um, you know, looking back, actually, having a group of people that might be doing complete different projects on the same site. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Must have been... Uh, pretty helpful to like the discussions that were brought up because even if it doesn't serve you directly, mm. it could influence and help what you're about to create. Mm. Um, so I thought that was that was an interesting thing. We all hated the site, absolutely. Oh really? <laughs> it was a very complicated site, but that's how that's how you know I made my choice, and that's how the studio was um, laid out at least. That's fascinating. I can see a studio structured being structured that way would be very rewarding for a student assuming all the students are committed and stuff because it's difficult when so i mean i'll further describe uh, the, the thing that when i that i went through um depending on the institution and many other factors what i would say um is that if you're choosing a studio it's not just about the topic of the studio right it's about the teacher yeah and so one of the because in the, in the case of my school, you would find um, prospecti that were hyper specific, like again, multi low income multifamily housing, like that's ultra specific, um, or, or ones that are more like, again, you know, technology has kind of like changed how changed um, modern culture in the broadest sense. What does it mean for architecture? Well, that's pretty. Like, where are we going here with this? Like that can mean anything. And if you're a student who's not totally sure about what kind of project they want to do, like the end product, mm -hmm. like the what, like multifamily housing, then I would advise you look at the teachers as much as or maybe even more than the focus of the studio. Because thesis is the time for you to explore your own ideas, really. And so from my experience, uh, good thesis teachers will give you a fair amount of freedom because that's the point of thesis. And so I'd rather be paired, what I'm saying is I'd rather be paired up as a student with a teacher who I know is incredibly intelligent, is going to work with me and help me achieve my best project, um, even if that means we don't overlap 100%, as opposed to going with a teacher who I've seen them at reviews, I'm like, this guy's kind of a dumb fuck. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, we have like this in common. Like, I, you know, it, it's a year. A year is a long time for a, for a student and to have this close relationship with the teacher. So I would look very closely at the intellectual caliber of the teachers. Well, it's like when you're hiring a, an architect, you might have an idea of what your project is going to be like, but you should be hiring them for who they are. And actually, that reminds yeah. me, that's how I, I picked uh, that studio I remember talking to another student who was a year older because we did have choices, you know, in the many different teachers. And some of them were teaching like, uh, you know, like a second year studio, third year studio. So we knew a few of them, but some of them were only teaching fifth year. Mm. So unless you had them, you would not know what they were like. And I remember that the ones I, I chose, because it was a group of three teachers, had an extremely good reputation and, um, you know, just... Very thorough, very helpful, but not like doing the work for you mm -hmm. and very supportive. You know, there was other ones that were maybe a bigger name and that's why students would go, you know, to their studio was because they had the reputation as being architect of a certain level. Sure. Um, but I, I think it's hard to, to pick a studio based on like the topic or yeah. like what kind of building. I mean, I think you're right. It's an exploration and it's kind of good and really hard to jump into a fifth year studio without knowing what you're going to be doing. You know, it's it really is, reassuring it is, it to is. take a, you know, a, join a group and be like, okay, we're going to do multi, multi family mm -hmm. housing. And okay, that's answering that question. Let's move on. Right. Versus going to a group and be like, I have no idea what's going to happen. And, you know, I think that you had said that this is very similar to a client working with an architect and it's a fucking awesome analogy. Probably shouldn't swear so much on these recordings. It's a freaking awesome analogy <laughs> uh, because that's exactly what it's like. And so um, it never occurred to me in, in, in that clearly. Um, so, yeah, because it is a long process and you're going to work very closely with this teacher. So it's almost a, it's almost, yeah, more about like that, that specific personal relationship pairing. So I had said like the, you know, intellectual caliber, like you want to work with someone who's smart, um, right? You don't yeah. want to work with someone who's 
who's not. Who's lame. <laughs> and there are some lame teachers, like, for sure. Because um, like, a lot of teachers, they have tenure. They kind of, like, they've yeah, called they it in, like, up. years yeah, ago. Yeah. But also it's about the just the personality uh, and the social um, alignment. Yeah. You know, if you are a very intense student, you want a teacher who's going to not increase your stress, but be as motivated as you are and be on the kind of wavelength or whatever on the same path right um if you're a student who's super laid back and you don't really care and you have to be honest you're like oh, you know fifth year i just want to kind of get, i'm, I'm get done through. i want to keep, keep <laughs> do this and get out then you know you might want to find a, a certain kind of teacher so so doing the, the board. Uh, yeah and doing the the leg work into how you know into choosing the right studio and the right teacher for your fifth year you don't do that when you're about to make that choice like yeah. you should start looking into that you know, maybe in third year, maybe in fourth year, like go to reviews, 100%. go to pinups, you know, go to the final show and talk to the students afterwards. If they're happy with being in that studio, why, why not have a chat with the teacher if you can, right? Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I know now that we're kind of getting away from the thesis yeah, yeah, project yeah. itself, but you know, that's fine. Um, we're just talking about thesis, the course, right? Uh, going and talking to your teachers is something that I don't think students do enough. It's, it's one of the first things I rec- like I get reached. I, I, people reach out to me pretty often students that I, former students or people I don't know saying like what do I do for this or that and uh, a lot of times my answer is like have you spoken with your your teacher you have now or a lot of times if they reach out to me it's because they have they're uncomfortable with doing that or they don't have faith in the teacher did you reach out to other teachers like go and talk to them they have office hours right and they will love to speak with you so I totally agree with everything you're saying and the other thing about the thesis course um, and the, the year is that the kind of teacher that you have and the kind of person they are uh, informs the kind of students they attract, right? Oh, yeah. And fifth year being the longest, a lot of times it was the case for me is where you make some of your closest uh, friends and rela- longer term relationships in because you're all kind of crammed in there for a full year. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, the, the the personalities and the social aspects of it, I think, are... Super critical because all that too does inform the work you're going to produce. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe we can talk about how a person would choose a thesis topic before even getting to thesis, um, you know, or having some rough idea. Because uh, the, the individual who reached out, and, and we, I've heard this a number of times, people will say like, you know, I'm I'm about to get into fifth year. I'm before or I'm a fourth year. Fifth year is next, and um, like all my friends, they know what they're going to do for thesis already. Like they have those boxes checked, and they're speaking it. She's speaking about it with confidence, and like I don't know what I'm doing. You know, help. What what do I do? <laughs> well, that's where like there's two things, right? Uh, at least speaking from my from my own experience, like you know, the studio I had had a site. So as any site, there is a lot the site has to say. If you don't have a site, then maybe that's a different thing. But I think mainly, um, and we can debate about if this is good or bad, but I feel like a lot of theses are born from things that you have been interested in over the past four years you've been doing architecture in school, right? There is things that you just keep going back to on every project Mm. and... I hope it's not just for like a, a an aesthetic trend, sure. you know, it's a little bit deeper than that. And if that's the case, then you, I would say the first step I would do is just go look back at the projects you've done over the past four years. Try and find the commonalities of like the design response, you know, or, or the position that you took on those projects and see the parallels between them because that will show like what your interests were if they're not that clear. And then once you have that list of interests, Try and you know ask why are those interests there? What must have triggered that? Mm. Right, and sometimes it maybe goes back to more personal questions. You know, maybe sometimes it refers back to your life or where you come from, or you know, like what you've been through or whatever, whatever. Um, and I think that's where the juice starts to be made. You know, yeah. Um, and you just it's it. This is a lot of questioning throughout. And I think the, probably the first step of starting it or of finding the direction is to just ask a bunch of questions. Um, to yourself? To yourself, to the things you've done, to maybe what you're interested in the future that you have not done, right? Because sometimes you do projects 
in studio that might not be of very much interest. But, you know, if you are in architecture, there's something that like attracts you about architecture. There's something that triggers you, that, you know, questions you, like, and you just have to find what those things are. I agree. I agree. Um, you know, you were saying hopefully the commonalities and there's a, a common thread between the projects. Mm -hmm. And that thread, um, you know, if it's not there, is that a bad thing? Maybe not. But I think the thread is there because you were there. <laughs> so it's there to some degree. It might not be evident in the projects. It might not be a, it might not be visually expressed or visibly seen in the project. Like it might not express itself in the architecture or in the writing or in the diagrams. But there's something there's something there. Um I lost my train of thought now. Oh oh I, oh you were talking about the aesthetics. I think that's also why, and you were saying like you should, it shouldn't be just about aesthetics, right? Yeah. I think that's also why one of the pieces that I would uh, advice I would give to students is to really embrace the different kinds of projects you have to go through during the, let's say, four years. Um, and at the same time, be thinking about like, what does this mean to me? personally how do i feel about it now yours one to like two that's going to be impossible you won't be able to ask yourself that question if it's too deep but to not be closed-minded in, in other words because i've seen students where they are they already figured it out they already figured out what they want to focus on i want to do like laser cutting defab stuff right, year one right. i'm like okay well you're like 17 years Seems old. Like like, what do you know about here. architecture? Yeah. Like, there's a architecture is, a, is, a, is the entire world, and you've narrowed in on one thing. Um, and at, at you know day 14 of studio, like I, I don't. That's not a good. That's not a good thing. And I think also like trying on a, a diversity of projects and diversity of, of maybe even approaches and a diversity of, of whatever is really the only way where you're going to find that true common thread the, yeah. the one that's honest and pure and not forced and it doesn't mean that it's something that you have already explored you know agreed um i mean for my own projects i think i was actually more interested in like um maybe social aspect of design like how design can impact people it may be less about forms or you know um other types of interests mm -hmm. or or sustainability or things like that for me it was really like how how does the built environment like plays with how people live and, and interact with each other every day right sure. um, and that extended to a bigger question which was not necessarily at the architecture scale it was much more of like an urban scale mm -hmm. which was not something that i've ever done before because i studied architecture sure you know so it doesn't mean that you just have to kind of like repeat uh, on a bigger project what you've done on something else. It's really finding the core of your interest and then try to guide them to the way that it makes sense for you to express that argument. And um, this is why one of the best pieces of advice I received as a student, and and I, I kind of laugh because this is the kind of thing people always say, like one of the best pieces of advice I got. And I never say it because I don't remember anything, but this is the one thing I did remember was from Mark Neveu, who we had on the show. And he had told me, because I had him as a teacher when I was in third, uh, first quarter, third year. So I was pretty young. Um, I was really young, actually. And um, at the end of the quarter, he was like, you know, you clearly have some kind of like, big questions about architecture and some big kind of critical takes. They're not quite clear yet, but you, there's something. He's like, you should remember those. Like, don't forget about those as you move forward. Now, the danger with that, as actually he expressed on this podcast, was that if you tell that to a student, it can be it can be too much sometimes. Then they have this weight of like, what is the big question <laughs> for every yeah. project they do and become stifling and paralyzing. So it's difficult with these conversations because it does come down to a balance. But so I... I, I I think you do have to have you have to have an awareness of those underlying thoughts and those underlying things that you naturally gravitate toward. You know, if I go back and look at my studio projects, I do wish there was more diversity in a certain sense. But I also see either um, express again, you know, visually, or I know because of how I felt when I was doing this project that yeah, there's there's certain questions here that I'm always kind of wrestling with 
that that kind of disturb me enough to where they're always present. You know. Yeah, and sometimes you know it's not just looking back at、uh, your studio projects. You also look back at all the classes that you're taking.、Mm. You know, like、uh, I don't know, you're taking an urban history class, and it's fascinating to you, like. You know the evolution of the human species and and the forms of urbanism that was designed over time, or like whatever, right? Like it, it doesn't doesn't matter where it comes from as long as it's honest, true, and you are like extremely curious about it because you have to be very much excited about it. it shouldn't feel like a homework and something that you have to respond. It should be something that comes from. Inside you, and you are curious and and excited into finding what it is, learning more, making discovery, right?、Um, but it's a tricky process, and、it's、you know, I, actually, I think the the question of the the the, the argumental question of thesis, like your thesis, won't come until maybe like I don't know, a couple of months before half, the end. Yeah, you know, like it's point,、yeah. it's you're kind of like steering the boat in a direction. But you don't know what the destination is exactly until you're getting close to it. Yeah, you know, like there is there is storms and there is clouds and there is rainbows and there is blue skies and then one day like you see it, it's right there and that's that's what, what you're aiming. Unicorn. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Um, yeah, I think that gets to the openness.、Um, but you know, I, you were describing looking back at the work and trying to understand what's there, or looking back at other courses, looking back in some way, and and having this kind of retrospective. I think that's also it's the same thing as like when when、uh, when a student if you're a student you have a, a studio course you complete a project, a lot of the reward and the educational experience of that is when you take time to think about it after it's done. Yeah, you do not, and this comes naturally to some students, and maybe it comes and it's not natural. But you should everyone you should you should take time. You know, somehow I don't know if it's when you're showering or when you're running or whatever to think about the work you've produced and the and the process you went through and the feedback you got and the people you were with, and that is, it's a critical thing to go through. It's the it's the analysis phase. It, it's 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 not quite as structured. I'm not saying you have to sit down for an hour and be like, okay, what happened here? It sometimes it, it's just it's it's more meditative. It, ha- it happens when you're doing dishes, right? But it is critical because that's how you kind of. Frame what happened under, and maybe understand what happened from a more distant perspective. It's it's the really really rewarding stuff. You know, it's high density nutrition, and、um, it's the same thing that we're describing here. But here we're describing on a on a bigger scale, right? I also feel that because we're acknowledging that it's difficult to do this, it's kind of it's not easy. But I do feel like the same. The the kind of mental state、uh, and process you have to go through to 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 uncover these things is the same thing as when you're designing a project and you have to come up with a concept. Like it feels the same to me internally, and so the, I've seen some students where they go through projects and they you know, school and they do decent projects and they get to a fourth year and they're like they have no idea what to do, and、um, they have. When you ask them and they try to think about it, it's just blank. It's just white space. There's not. There's nothing there, right? I don't know what to look back on. I don't have any kind of inkling or any kind of gravitation towards something. It's just blank white space, right? And I'm like, well, you know, you, you, you kind of messed up here because you, you should have. There should be, should be something. There should be a speck of something in this white room for you to go off of, you know. And so I, I guess I guess the long a roundabout way of saying it, it's just important of, of having concepts throughout. Like if you don't have conceptual thinking, there's no way you're going to be able to form a thesis. That's another way to put it.、Maybe、well, and、obvious. I think it comes down to being honestly involved in the projects that you do throughout school. You know, if you're again just working for a specific portfolio with a, a specific agenda, you said at the beginning,、uh, thesis might not come as clear. Yeah. You know, like if you take it as a vacation, well, when come fifth year, like, hey, big wake up here, <laughs> you know, like white page. So what do we do? You yeah, know? no, it, it doesn't work it, that it, way, right? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way.、Um, because the, the education and all this stuff is is very much additive, even if it doesn't feel like that、yeah. sometimes. And you know, yeah, I do like what you said about being open when you get to thesis, despite all of what we said of like trying to uncover like the the thread that's there.、Um, I like the idea of when you get to thesis,、uh, you maybe at best have a rough kind of direction, or at least you know like what you're not interested in. You know, like for me, 
maybe similar to you. Uh, you know, I was not super interested in like the metrics of sustainability because in my view at that time, I'm like, well, <laughs> there's like probably people who do actual research who can figure that out. I don't think I need to do that. And not, I'm not going to be able to do it anyway in, in the year as a, you know, 20, whatever year old. And I uh, also wasn't interested in other things like, uh, you know, folded paper, origami, you know, structures. Like, Ma I, yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I, Material facade experimentation. It's been done like a thousand times. Yeah. I don't need to do another one. Um, I'm not interested in doing it. So, so yeah, I think there, the, the, it's another way to understand like where you're going is to understand where you're not going, you know, quite simply. What's not in your field of vision. For me, I always had an interest in the... Um, it's getting very specific, like the informality of architecture, like architecture as being more of an open network uh, of sorts and it and how it adapts or relates or catalyzes or has some kind of um, ongoing discussion and dialogue with the people around it, rather than it being like a fixed thing. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean, you know, it, it actually physically moves. That's not what fixed or, or, or dialogue means, but it has some kind of evolving relationship with people. And I was also very interested in cities, right? And so this this is going back to my fourth year, right? People ask me. And I was interested in, um, yes, how technology has affected how all of us perceive the world, live within the world, communicate with each other. Now, those three topics are like super, super vague, right? Like, what do you, that's not a thesis at all. That's, it's hardly even a direction. It's like you have three big interests that are maybe related but also not really related at all they could be related if you really think about it and that's where i started and so i chose my teacher based on who they were more than anything else and it took quite some time to figure out like what is the the glue between these things and the the natural adhesion not like i need to force these things into one big statement but like these are the i don't know the, the parameters of the space like where am i going it took time. It's interesting because it's the thesis project is it's complicated because there's two things. There is the argument, which is, you know, like your presentation, like maybe or why you might be writing to explain what your project is about, right? Mm. There is the explanation component of the project and that is mostly the thesis. And then there is the building, like the design you come up with. And these two are, are things that you work on simultaneously throughout the whole year, right? Which two? The, ar the, ar the argument the, the, and the design. Right. Right. Um, and it's... A oh, that's different. Well, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Well, it's just continue and I'll, and I'll tell you what, what we did. Um, it is very hard to... And I'm not saying that necessarily happened at the same time, like concurrently throughout, like they could happen slightly later or whatever, but you, you have to further and, and refine the argument as, as much as you're expressing that through a design, right? Mm -hmm. Which is very complicated. And you know, if you can, if you can do both well, that's, that's great. But there is also many chances that you, you're not going to be able to, mm -hmm. um, and at some point you have to choose what's more important, you know, being clear in my argument or have a great design. Like it's, 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 it's a complex, you know, it, it's, it's a lot, it, it's a lot, it's a lot. And uh, I actually remember I changed, I changed my argument <laughs> a few times, sure. you know, because you're kind of like, you're wandering around, you're like going back to things and, you know, going back and forth and finding new stuff and, and it's changing, right? So at some point you have to lock it somewhere. Otherwise you can't, you yeah. can't just keep redesigning your stuff, right? Yeah. You have to lock it somewhere. And I think there is a stress for the students to see the calendar days moving and the arguments still not being locked in. And then, you know, as any project, you start freaking out about, oh, I'm only have like two weeks to design the building. Like, this is not going to work, right? Yeah. But uh, I would say try not to be too stressed about the calendar days because you really need... <laughs> okay. okay, It's hard, it's hard. But you really need to have enough time to really go deep in the argument and find and make it clear. Because if you don't, you're going to struggle to do the, the building part, the building part. And now let's give a shout out to our sponsors who support our show. We're supported by Brizo, a luxury faucet brand. Now, you know me. I'm a designer. I have very high standards. I love iconic, unique, designed things. Is Brizo for me? 
Well, actually, so you know, Brizo's products are very distinctive because they pair beautiful design and craftsmanship, mm-hmm. which I think these days is pretty rare. Mm-hmm. For example, they have a Kintsu collection, which makes use of concrete, wood, and mother of pearl inlays. I mean, that's pretty unique wow, right there. Yeah. Uh, and they also have uh, an Invari collection that has a hand-assembled linchpin joints. That sounds pretty interesting. I know, right? So I really like the idea of, of the, those different types of finishes and touches and the craftsmanship aspects of these faucets. But do these faucets perform well? Actually, you know, Brizo is very innovative. Um, so in the bath space, for example, you know, we're limited to a certain flow of water and pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water uh, conservation, I, I support this. Right, me too. I mean, you know, lead and all that, that's great, right? Uh, but sometimes the experience of the shower really sucks because of that. <laughs> um, so they came up with an H2O kinetic technology that creates the feeling of a high flow shower Hour, but only uses a fraction of the water. Where can I see more of their stuff? If you want to find out more info, you could check out their products by clicking the link in our episode notes. Great. If you're wanting to get into the BIM technology, we recommend that you look into Archicad by Graphisoft. Archicad is a very powerful BIM tool, which allows you to work in 2D and 3D at the same exact time. And it also allows for really uh, comprehensive teamwork. So different people can be working on the same file at the same time. The interface is extremely user-friendly and the software runs very smoothly because it's lightweight. It is not a subscription-based, but it's a still license-based software, which we personally prefer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it works for any size of offices and any types of projects. You could even do interior work in it. Check it out today by clicking on the Graphisoft link in our show notes. And now we return to the show. Yeah, this is super fascinating because... Um, For people who don't know us or maybe haven't listened to this podcast in the longer term, you and I, you, Marina, and and me, David, we're like different in the sense that I'm pretty sure when we were students, you were the one who did their stuff on time. You probably didn't pull a whole lot of all-nighters. The only show rights I did, I think, were in in fifth year. (laughs) Okay. Because it was a bit of a lot. And uh, I was the complete, like, you couldn't get more perfectly 180 degrees away from that. (laughs) statement of of like my level of thinking at those ages but more on that end and the, and the theory and the thinking and the writing and the conceptual and uh, rather than execution so my advice would actually be the complete opposite of what you said <laughs> because um i struggled with that the the most and so it, it's it, it does highlight that uh, all this kind of uh, recordings information and things you absorb out there is dependent on who you are right yeah um so, and, and that's, but I get and that's what you're actually saying. the biggest. That's actually, actually sorry. The biggest uh, takeaway from thesis is that year is going to be so challenging. But ultimately, the I would say the goal should be for you to find what's your com- what are you comfortable with? What's your process? What's your comfort zone? What's your 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 tools like? Mm-hmm. What's going to be the most helpful for you for the next step in your life, right? And and that's what these should be bringing. Not particularly a beautiful building, maybe a groundbreaking argument, maybe not. But really, like the core of what you should aim for is yeah. like challenging yourself in all, all of the ways you can to see like how far you can stretch yourself out and, 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 and see who you are then, you know? I agree with your larger takeaway about the value of thesis. Totally, that that is the stretching kind of you described. That's it, because all the other projects to date, if you're a student and you haven't done competitions on your own, have been tightly framed. And and actually, the trend for education is they get tighter and tighter and tighter, right? You're so tight that you hear steps A, B, C, D, E, and F, and like now you have a project, and then you have a mid review, and you're done. It's like okay, well, where was like the freedom for someone to think? You know, just think blank white page maybe there's not even a freaking site and just think that's what thesis is and um so i think it's it's super important maybe it sets you up and 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 helps you determine what things you're going to explore for the next 10 years maybe in the rest of your life i mean honestly the things i looked at when i was in fifth year they still, I was going to say, haunt me. They're still with me. Like, I still think about them pretty often, despite me practicing on a completely different skill these days. Um, so it, its value is potentially the subject matter, yes. But I think more importantly, its value is giving you the ability to really go deep into, I mean, really, in quotes, because you're still only fifth year, you're not even a master's, right? But to really go deep into something and to understand what it feels like to think that deeply to research that deeply to have critical takes on something to get to the as core as as deep in the well as you could possibly go before you pull yourself back out to complete the thing 
And that's that's the trick that you kind of alluded to is that you need to know when you need to come back out to the surface to finish the project because there is a project component. I, I want to talk about, though, the developing the thesis topic a bit more. So for me, you know, I described the kind of three things I was interested in. And the way I initially started, and this is once I got to fifth year, um, to try and hone in on, on really what is the the key question I'm doing and, and when and and sometimes it, for me it was like the key question yes but also it was like what is the project going to be and that's another way to kind of further understand or to to bring clarity to the thesis and that's I think the the nice thing about being a an architectural designer or, or a designer of physical you know graphic things is you have this other dimension this other media this other medium uh, of graphics to kind of think through and clarify thoughts which I personally for me is super helpful I could never be someone who just writes it's not, not possible for me so I would use small architectural explorations or even just thinking about like what's the site going to be for this thing because we didn't have a site uh, real quick like all of our projects were different sites whatever site you wanted it was very very open um, like, what is the site going to be? What is the context of the project? What is the scope of the project? To try and clarify what the thesis wants to be. And so I would look at these kind of things at the same time throughout in the initial first phase, which is more like research and writing phase. And then the second phase is the project, let's say roughly, um, to try and understand what, what I'm doing. And I would also, I did a lot of writing. I would write kind of thought experiments or just why I'm interested in and in, in arguments about these three different things. Like what are my observations with how um, is technologies or specifically like networked communication, mobile technologies, right? Cell phones, social media and stuff. How how has that impacted daily lives? Just the things I see on an everyday basis, the, my larger maybe theories about it and just put it all out there on paper and then start to connect um, the dots much as you would when you're doing research for a project anyway. So that's kind of the initial first steps I took. And I'm curious to know for you, you know, you, you start with like this very vague, <laughs> I have to say very vague statement of like how architecture impacts people, you know, uh, but how did you, how did you get from there to like the next step of knowing it was going to be X type of project or X or the thesis or like what were, what were the steps, right? Cause it's a huge leap to go from what you described to like I have a project on a thesis. Yeah, I'm still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whew, it again, it's been a long, long time. <laughs> and I have a tendency of moving on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I have to, like, you know, um, try and remember. Um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I, I think also, you know, uh, my thesis came at the time where cell phones were more and more. Uh, Are you just copying what I just no, said? Just because no, you had, we you, talked about that before. We talked about that before. No, and actually, uh, a, a portion of the the research was like basically taking the subway in Paris and noticing no one was looking at each other. Everybody sure. was on their phone while you are sitting in a moving, uh, you know, uh, 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 vehicle, mm -hmm. right? And you have the city landscape going by you and all of this life going by you and you're not there. Like you're completely in a, in a different place. Um, so the research and, and kind of the argument was to how could the physical environment bring people back to the place in which they are, right? Okay. And reconnect them with each other, reconnect them with the city, reconnect them with nature, you know, and all of those like, good stuff. Um, so it was an, it was... <laughs> It was a big question, and you know, I wish I had a question a bit more refined uh, at the beginning of thesis because it would have saved me like quite a few weeks. Um, but you know, it was a lot of reading about urban urban design, urban mm. stories, and try to get a grasp on this topic that was not foreign but not very familiar. You know, on like a, a more philosophical level than like. You know, look at the plan of Paris, the master plan of Paris and like the different axes and stuff like it, it was much more philosophical than that. Um, I did some research where I would walk different itineraries in the city and make observation and like oh. track things differently to try and understand like directly what those things would do to me. Um, you know, like so how kind you of would like, feel. Yeah, how you would feel, uh, you know, take the subway and like observe people and do like little reports and stuff like that. Um, so it, it it was. I wish my question was a little bit less. 
I don't know, philosophical, let's say, They're a bit more grounded into design because it would have helped me a lot more. Sure. And then, you know, the site was very complicated site, which, which did not help. So yeah. it was, uh, to be honest, it was a lot of struggles for, compared to my previous projects where I could like ply through fairly easily. Oh, um, I have here. to say that fifth year was a, a little bit, a lot overwhelming and, um, it, it, it took time. It took trials. It took, you know, realizing that what you have is not great and mm. just like, you know, forget about it, try again and try again and try something different so you can go in a, you know, in deeper direction. Um, I mean, I remember my studio apartment in Paris was like just models, like concept box models, models of all sorts all over the map because, you know, at some point you're kind of lost. You're like, I don't really know where I'm supposed to go. And the teachers were good enough that they were not telling me what I should be doing. They were asking me the question I should ask it myself oh, to find where to go. The hallmark of a great and also frustrating teacher. To and you're like, but it sounds like you have the answer. Just give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, so it, it, in, in that sense, it was a very personal process too, because you're really like, at some point, you just want to give up. And at some point, you just want to be like, you know what? I'm just going to pick that answer. I'm going to pick that argument. I'm going to take the easy route and just get this done, you know, because this is exhausting. This is emotionally, mentally exhausting. And I have no one telling me what I should be doing. Mm. So, um, yeah. And I think one day, you know, you, you find something and it starts clicking and then you just go full force and things just start clicking more and more and more. Um, you know, if I'm happy with the way my thesis ended and the building itself probably not i could have done something better but you know i felt like i i brought it to the best point i could at the time with the time i had um so yeah oh thank you for that that nice yeah. little summer right there yeah. um i don't remember I, exactly all the steps because it's been so long you know you asked me like what are the steps you took to get you there or whatever i know there is there was very many <laughs> well uh, and, it's uh, a lot of yeah go ahead and uh yeah it's a lot of trial and error. Um, the best way I can probably describe thesis looking back on it and the experience of it and what it means to a person, a designer, is it's sort of like you went through a, you know, a retreat, but you did mushrooms and ayahuasca. Like it's a transformative kind of experience where you are getting in touch with yourself and all these weird, deep <laughs> questions. It, it sounds bizarre, but like... That's really what it is because there's, and if you do it right, if there's like intense focus and it's very internal as well as being external, it's, it's, it's nothing like previous projects. And in part because you're afforded the time to have this, uh, process happen. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I'm not sure I would recommend for, for students in their fifth year to live on their own in a tiny ass apartment sure. <laughs> because at some point you feel like you're like you're living in you you're you're living in your mind you're living in your head uh and uh you know those good days and those bad days <laughs> let's put it this way um and also i was mostly not really seeing any friends or going anywhere just on that every freaking day and i would i would recommend to take breaks because i do think that if i hadn't you know if i had taken breaks it would have helped the process quite a bit. Sure. I mean, it would probably help the project too. Yeah. It's tough though, because, you know, when there's a lot to get done, you just want to keep working. There's a lot to get done and, and you want to give your best, you know, like you're a student, you're passionate and you want to just like reach for the best and you're just going to give everything you have. But at some point, you just kind of have to slow down a bit. So talking about the initial steps, you know, you had mentioned this very broad interest and in, again... Actually, you gave a specific example of like people being on the phones and not paying attention to the environment, right? Mm -hmm. And this observation has been made like a, a millions times, of times, yeah. right? Fine. That doesn't make the that observation problematic, um, even to to this day. Um, even now, you know, quite some time has passed, so maybe your observation was a bit more interesting then. Now it's like it's, ah, it's right? boring. But, it, but just because it's been said before, it doesn't mean it's not interesting. It doesn't mean it doesn't have value. It doesn't mean it's wrong, and it doesn't mean that it's not going to lead you somewhere. Right. And this maybe gets to the topic of originality. So when you get to the PhD level and you're, doing a, and you're doing a dissertation, you're meant to be contributing to the profession or to the field. Right. So the, the research you're doing is meant to be it's, it is original research and that no one's doing it. But you're meant to like 
add on top of to and uh, contribute to the body of knowledge that the field is offering the world, the like human species, right? That kind of pressure, if you put that on yourself as a fifth year, is going to probably crush you. So I think it's great to kind of strive for that generally throughout life. Why not? Um, and go for it. But you have to recognize maybe even more from a mental health, you know, um, caretaking perspective there. You do have to draw boundaries, and limitations somewhere. One, um, not to go crazy. Two, uh, because realistically, again, this is not a dissertation. It's not a true thesis. This is a m mini miniature partial thesis. And then three, uh, as I was saying earlier, you know, for the sake of the project itself turning out better. Um, so, you know, I also feel like a lot of students probably think that uh, their thesis project is what's going to guarantee their next, their first job, no. you know, and the success and, and the rendering or the intricacy of the question is what's going to seduce, you know, the first employer in like picking them versus someone else. Mm -hmm. The truth is no one cares about your thesis when you're applying for a job. Well, they care about the portfolio work. They care about the overall body of work you have to present, mm -hmm. but they're not going to hire you because they love your thesis. Unless you're applying for a very niche office that does similar things. Yeah. You know, that's in a, that that's one one situation. For, for like, you know, you're doing digital fabrication, whatever. Yeah, but that's very specific. Kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you're correct. Like the, it's, it's about the entire portfolio. So, but, but the question of, of originality, uh, uh, the topic of originality, I think is important because it can be stifling and there is a, a, an ongoing discussion amongst academics, uh, ongoing, I mean, it's, it's always, always been present of, of the value of a true thesis versus a lightweight thesis versus capstone. And is it important for students to try and and try and create something that is original or offer something that's original. And it's, it's, it's something that's, that's up for debate. I think more important though, is the effort that goes into understanding oneself and one's process and their interests and how they work through those problems more than anything else, more than whether or not it's original or not original, or a, as you said, a project that's really well done versus a project that's not really well done or not really the most beautiful, but it, it contains within the process, the things that you've described. I know, and that's what really pissed me off the day of my final review with the final jury. Mm -hmm. is maybe I focused too much on the argument, although I thought my, my design and my building was pretty cool and pretty interesting, right? Um, and the guy, another guy in my group, completely weighing the thing, you know, last minute, had no argument, didn't do anything throughout the whole year, and managed to seduce the jury with like a couple walk through his building. And I'm like... Yeah. This is BS. Yeah. I, I, well, you know, in a, in a parallel universe, I was that guy's teacher and he didn't pass. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, but that's the thing too. Well, like I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there is like the, uh, we talked about this before, right? Where in France you graduate or you don't. And in the US, you're mostly going to graduate, yeah. right? Um, but even if you graduate in France, to me, that guy hasn't graduated because he didn't, he didn't play. He didn't play. With, he didn't play like the other players in the game. Right. You know, he just kind of like cheated his way through, and I don't think he didn't understand. And like to me, he did not understand the 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 purpose of thesis. The purpose wasn't to like seduce the jury. The purpose was to learn about yourself, what you're capable of doing in a very tough situation with no one else but yourself. You know, and well, so yeah. Well, see, if you became a teacher, then you you can get back at all those types of oh, students yeah, those, that's just my erase them with my that's, little eraser just that's my erase real motivation faces. for teaching just to stick it to those <laughs> students to screw over the students who deserve to be screwed over yeah see that's the yeah. hallmark of a good teacher yeah. <laughs> um so look talk, talking about the process again um and maybe I, we, we can further this or i can further describe the the steps that I went through or what happened and how I evolved from those three topics uh, to what ended up being sort of a thesis. Um, so what were the things that I mentioned again? They were active architecture, architecture that created an ongoing and active dialogue with people, interest in, uh, again, how communication technologies have affected folks interested in cities. So where I ended up in the end was the project was urban design. The project actually had... Uh, a big part of it was a transfer redesigning of transportation, 
within a, a, a template city. Um, in my case, I used New York, Manhattan, like Midtown Manhattan, let's say the grid as like the site, but really it was just an excuse to pinpoint it on a, on the earth somewhere. It was really just a generic grid city, right? Um, so there we have uh, the kind of project, the rough scale of the project, the f building type, uh, which in this case was like transportation, and that also involved the project uh, ha had a kind of like reimagining of the zoning code, right? And all those things uh, paint a picture of um, this future state, right? Which is a demonstration of the thesis. And so, you know, I, I don't know if I can walk through exactly how I went from those three things to the end and how they all got tied together. But that's like, that was the, the that was, those are two points that end up getting bridged, right? And it, for me, it ended up being about how people move, how people interact with the city which then became about how people move within a city because I had discovered or realized or determined that how people move and navigate within a city is the most primal and direct way that they interact with the city, um, which led to a discussion about transportation, which led to core ideas about fluidity and hybridity as opposed to um, segregation, which is much of transportation in Manhattan, you know, sidewalk and streets and stuff like that. And... Um, and with navigation, I mean, I don't want to get onto my thesis, but but that that's kind of like I don't know if it helps, but but that's where starting with these really vague ideas and vague interests, they translated into something physical, right? In the end, um, well, it's about finding what your dots are, and then the argument is how you connect them. To a certain degree, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's tough actually, because you that's, can't force... That's what can make your originality, right? Let's say you have different topics that are fairly non-original, mm -hmm. but the combination and the connection between them is what could make it original. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, I don't know, you really love trees, but you're really also obsessed with technology, well, how do, how do the two meet, right? Like, how could they coexist and become this new thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, at the end of it, when I think about the thesis process, it's not really any different from a typical. So if you're listening to this recording because you're interested in our thesis and you're concerned about it, then you should listen to the developing a concept recording. You should listen to the design process recording we did. Uh, not the design companion one that's for clients, but the, the one that's for designers under the fellow designer category of episodes of design process. And you should listen to, if you want to see the 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 later um, version of some of my thesis thoughts, just for funsies, I, we did a recording called the In Between State, which was more about a paper I did later on. But those three are kind of like maybe supportive of this uh, recording or could fit with it, I feel like. Um, cause as I'm talking through the thesis process and finding a topic and f fleshing out the topic, um, there is the notion of honesty seems is very important. And, and what happens is in fifth year, a lot of students, they start the year not knowing, not having even any, to any topics really. Right. And they, they try to find a topic and the problem with, with anything is that you have time is always against you and you have the schedule you have to maintain and it's important to maintain it otherwise you fall completely behind and so they're kind of like checkpoints and by a certain date roughly a certain month or week or whatever you have to have at least chosen a topic and what what takes place is that for a lot of students who, who, who can't naturally on their own figure that out uh, they will just default or defer to what the studio topic is or what the topic or the interests of the teacher and they'll ad adopt that as their topic. To me, that's fine because you got to move forward, right? Um, I think in, in that sense, the thesis here maybe is less about you understanding your own, not original, but your own really natural personal gravitations toward things and you're, you're still kind of more doing the act of role playing you're assuming the persona of the teacher or you're assuming the parameters of the studio project as opposed to doing your own thing 
But nevertheless, like, again, there's a schedule to be kept and you have to complete things. So I think that works. The danger with that, though, is that you turn off the side of your brain of, of thinking you just kind of just go with the flow, so to speak. And and that ha- that happens for sure. You get students who just produce like miniature versions of what the teacher does because they just don't know how to think on their own at the level that thesis requires. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you are talking about schedule, that's another super important one during thesis and making yourself accountable to produce stuff by a certain date. And, you know, if you think about it on other projects you've done throughout the previous years, that wasn't so much of a big component. Um, you know, you you have to show stuff like every week, just show the teacher, yeah, you're working on your thing. And then maybe like, you know, you're just going to bang, bang doing the model, bang out doing the model out like the week, the weekend before, mm-hmm. you know, like, and that's it. You made it, you, you had your stuff on time. But like that notion of regular schedule um, to assure some sort of progress towards something in a much longer period of time is really the first time it happens is in fifth year. And again, that's something that's going to happen after when you start working in your own projects, right? Like, Well, especially if you have your own office. You can't, you know, work on the concept for a new project for like a year. Like at some yeah. point, that's not, you, you're bankrupt, you know, like <laughs> you got to get going. So it's, it, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's uh, it's th- like the, 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 it's interesting because when you are the student, you feel like oh maybe this is those steps are a little bit superfluous or the schedule maybe is a, it's too strict. It's not necessary, right? But in a way, there are steps that are just being introduced now before you really get to to it, you know, as a professional. Yeah, things become much more structured when you practice. Generally, if you're practicing at a good office, you know, or you're you're you're, you're financially successful have a financially successful practice and th- and you know, th- it has to be structured and that's you know it could be kind of a turn off for the creative mind to have that clock ticking yeah. you know it's kind of a it's kind of a tough relationship and, and a battle sometimes to feel like you're free to just explore and you know try things out and you have the time whatever time you need to get to where you need to go um, but in the same time no you don't like time is of the essence here and yeah yeah. Th- th- that's a big difference between um, school and practice as those are switched, right? In the school, it's not the, 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 the problem of freedom doesn't exist. The problem of being structured exists, and that's the opposite in practice. The problem of freedom, it, it, that, 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 that is the problem, it, is trying to get into that mindset. Being structured is not the case because you're forced to because your livelihood depends on being structured to a certain degree, right? And you have real deadlines. Um, but... Going back to being a student and doing the thesis, and you were what were we talking about? You were talking about, oh yeah, schedule, and you know the balance of like the 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 paper, mm-hmm. right? Because there was a paper and the project, and um, in case it wasn't clear, um, you know the project is an expression of the paper. It's a demo, a graphic, representation. Uh, or physical, we could yeah. say, representation and expression of it. It's meant to show the value of the statement that is being proposed, right? What is the value of having this different transportation system or the value of a different zoning code or the value of uh, an architecture that's more open and has na- uh, nature weaving through it? What does that do for people? Um, if you're concerned with people, which a lot of architects aren't, apparently. You're concerned <laughs> with other things. Um, and, uh, but uh, it... it one of the big challenges with the thesis year is doing a project that is executed to a, a minimum level of success so that it is something and it doesn't just it just fall apart at the end. And that is a unique, sort of a unique challenge with thesis, depending on the student, because you you spend so much time doing research and writing during thesis you've never really done before. Uh, generally for all the other projects. You would do some research and a little bit of writing, maybe in some diagramming, but years one through four, you pretty quickly jump into just doing the thing because you're learning how to just do the thing, make the project, right? And thesis, you get, you, you're you allotted roughly half of the year to the researching, the writing, and the paper. And then more or less, there's like, a line in the sand and, and, and a stopping point with that, and then you jump to doing the project. Now, the two bleed over, but the, but that separation is, is really problematic or really challenging for students. And I say that because 
you can have a student who produces a really good thesis argument, a fantastic paper. It's like well written. It's well researched. It's it's you know ten stars, and the project is shit, right? And that happens because it's difficult to, to move out of that mode of thinking, reading, and writing, and just like constant hardcore critical brain thinking to like okay now pen to paper we gotta go we gotta like make something now and for some students they get used to that hypercritical mindset and they go to now to design which they've used to know how to do and they're like all i see is like problems at every corner i uh, I, that i'm in because like i'm used to being hypercritical of every statement i make and the design process for creating a building a physical thing right you you can't have that mindset throughout you have to just try you have to be free and go of course the other thing that happens is people spend too much time doing the research like just just in the calendar days and don't, don't leave enough time to do the project and in another situation there are students who are just naturally gifted at doing the research and writing and they're not very good at doing doing buildings i've seen that too uh, the, and when they and there's probably a track record right they've probably been that way from year one to a certain degree they have all these beautiful statements beautiful concepts and whatever when it comes time to do the building they just they just can't and, you know, if that's the case for you, then it's probably a, um, it might be a hint that maybe practicing architecture, like typical architecture, is not the thing for you. Maybe. Well, maybe it's a hint that when fifth year comes, you should start dabbing onto, like, physical things. Sooner. Sooner. Because yeah. you know it's going to take you more time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that you know, we had interviewed Sharon Zukin on this podcast a couple times, and I think both times, but in the last interview, one of the interesting things with her, and she's a um, a teacher, a professor, right, at the doctoral level, but she's also a an active urban researcher and writer. And uh, what was interesting, speaking with her, is that her approach to what she does, it's very, like, open-ended when she begins. She has, again, like a rough, like, oh, I'm sort of interested, but what was the last thing about it? It was about... The tech economy impacting urban spaces, some something like that. I'm kind of like, I don't know what's going on there. I know nothing about it. I'm a newbie. I'm kind of interested. Let's see. And she does some preliminary research, right? And then slowly the picture becomes clear and the focus and the the core intent of what she's writing becomes clear. And I, and I like that approach generally for many any creative project, any project. And I think it, it I like it for thesis too. As opposed to saying, I'm a fourth year, I know that I want to do like a virtual reality project. Why? Well, because I think like the Oculus is cool and I think it's like interesting and maybe I have a, a you know, a, a, a quasi theoretical argument behind it that is a lightweight argument, but that's good enough for me to, to justify me knowing right now as a fourth year that I'm going to do this project. Like, I don't know. I, I think I would start with... Um, some more fundamental just questions, you know, and not know what it's going to be and and figure out what it's going to be as, as part of the, the process um, later on. Yeah, it's very strange to me if, if a student would come and start with that. And that would be like, Whoa. and I mean, then the big question is why? It's always like, why does that interest you? Why yeah. that and not something else? Why did you come to studio today as the first day and you already know what you're doing? Like, why are you doing thesis then, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think keeping some some part of the open mind is key. Um, not have an opinion or position yet even. And be open to surprises and discovery is what ultimately is going to make the project more unique you know if you're worried about like having something cool for your portfolio well i think that's not the you know case. that's not the case and maybe the thing you should be most worried about is having something that's very important to you to be talking about during an interview mm. because if you're talking about your thesis project it doesn't look like you know a groundbreaking design it's you know graphic sucks and whatever but you're passionate about the way you can talk about it you can talk about it with a lot of familiarity and honestly and you and and with a very critical mind uh, you would impress much more the interviewer by doing that than actually like the project in itself the project it's going to speak for itself, yeah. but what they're interested in to see how you can speak about a project that you have done or you might be doing with them, mm -hmm. you know? So I would say stay away from like the trends of what's happening in the, in the actual world of architecture 
to try to stir the direction of your thesis、mm. and find something that's truly of your own interest. Yeah, yeah. And it's not to say that you can't or you shouldn't、um, have hyper specific、um, scenarios in your mind,、uh, architectural scenarios that you're interested in, right? Like.、Um, I mean, even your example of like uh, uh, of what you see a few people on the subway on their phones, like that's like ultra ultra specific in some ways, right? Or like you know, I with multifamily housing, I, like why it could be as simple as like why are the multifamily housing projects they look ugly? I don't understand this. So it's, it's not to say you you can't have a very very specific thing that that's bothering you, <laughs> you know. It's just to say that when you get to thesis, you have to unpack. Un- <coughs> excuse me. Unpack why that's bothering you, and, un- and understand that 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 scenario as a single point in a larger kind of、uh, perspective, and then have that perspective be where you start from to choose the actual thing itself. It's when people have a hyper specific thing,、um, and they stick with that, and they ref- they don't bother to see outside of it or see how that fits in within a larger scene.、Um, that becomes、uh, a-, a problem. You know, like I, I, like I don't know how many times I've seen a virtual reality thesis where like we're floating in virtual reality, and then the person talks about like, well, you know, virtu- we're soon gonna be all in VR, which probably won't happen for quite some time, but we're gonna be there. It's gonna be like the Matrix, basically, and you know, anything can happen. So therefore,、uh, I've kind of messed with some of like the rules of gravity and the rules of like architecture as a fixed thing, and I'm like, okay, well. Yeah, it, it, earlier I said you shouldn't be so concerned with with creating something original. At the same time, it's like, bro, if 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 this has been done a thousand times, I could throw a stone, I could go to any review and see the same project at like all every single university has one of these projects or two of these projects. Then you have to think about what am I doing differently, or what is the bigger picture that everyone's missing. It doesn't mean that the 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 project outcome.、Um, Of the thesis has to be something realistic, and I think it's an important thing to、uh, yeah, yeah yeah you know point out like it doesn't have to be something that can get built and that's like you know that 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 could exist in our reality like no if it does if it doesn't make sense for your argument you know if your argument like the result of your argument is that the building should be like you know floating in the sky then that's what it should be、yeah. right. But I, th- I think neither or should um, um, be predetermined.、Mm-hmm. They should influence each other. The argument and the project should be talking to each other to make sure that they are a true representation, either in writing or in architecture, of the argument you're not, you're trying to make, and not have determined one and then just try to wrap the other one around it because it's it's been required. It doesn't work. I mean, there's a rare. Rare instances and chance where, like, that is the case. You found that one thing that works, and you just have to unpack it and then create the dialogue around it. Or the inverse, you have that one, you know, true argument and create the project around it. But I'm like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the times, it's something's going to have to give one way or the other. Yeah, and and it's like you know when you're working on projects with a client later on in your life, like you're gonna have things that. Design-wise or tool-wise, you might be interested in implemented, but if it doesn't make sense, then you just save it for another one. Like、yeah. um, thesis is not is not your Christmas tree. That's not what you're putting all of the stuff that you want to be included. Like that's not like the final firework of your five years of architecture in the sense that you're all the things you're interested in. Like you patchwork it in there. Like that's not the point. Yeah, that's not the point. It's actually the complete opposite.、Mm-hmm. It's extremely focused, very minimal, and very true to itself.、Um, and that's actually much more complicated to do. Actually, that's a really good point.、Um, yeah, its focus is different from previous projects because previous projects and previous studios, you've had a list of requirements you have to satisfy, and a lot of and you know throughout the education process in different years, you're kind of forced to look at certain things like okay, the, for this project you have to have some greater understanding or deeper understanding of structures. You know, it's, you have to do it. Thesis is the one time where you get to define what's important, and.、Uh, And and there is yeah for sure like a, a purity to it,、mm-hmm. and you can't hide. Thesis is the one time too, 
because everyone who's viewing it understands it, understands that it's a it's a thesis. It, you can't hide behind like, oh, I have a list of things that I've I've crammed into here, or like, oh, like I meet the minimum requirements for like lead, and then I'm doing structures, and then I have like this going on and that going on, and like I've I've got all these qualifications. Now it's a good project. Like, actually, no, that's not the point. Like, I, you know, if, if I was a jury member, I'd be like, what? Like, I. I don't give a shit about that. Like that's not this, and your pro, and the thesis that you have doesn't care about that either. Like, what are you talking about? And it's like it's almost like if you think of um, like a scientist researching mm. for something, right? Like I don't know, they're looking for curing cancer. Well, they might be looking at a whole lot of different things and like experiment different techniques and looked into even different industries, different species, right? Like the exploration phase is very broad, mm. but the result they come down to is extremely precise, right? And they train down all the shit and that's how they came down to that specific thing. That's how they discovered it is yeah, you have to like be messy throughout the process. You have to consider everything. You have to like be open and whatever. But at the end, it has to be very sharp, very clear. And um, yeah. Yeah. And that is a tricky thing. And that's the value of it, I think, is is that 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 is the that's what a thesis paper is, really. It's like this diversity of information. Mm -hmm. And when you're reading it, you're like, oh, I'd never thought like this would be a factor or this would be something that supports this argument or this is part of the picture, right? But it is there. And uh, you have this underlying thing, this thesis that like is both being supported by all this information, but also tying all this information together. And, um, you know, like your example of VR and, and yeah. VR and, you know, like gravity and whatever, whatever. Well, I don't know. Maybe VR is a tiny crumb of the argument. Maybe the argument is like, why? I don't know. Why do we need gravities? Or why do buildings need gravity? Or what if there was no gravity, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think also f getting to find the question or the argument, it's like a Rubik's Cube. You kind of have to ask it in a many different ways before mm -hmm. you find a way that maybe hasn't been asked before. Yeah. You know, Um or maybe you found the the answer, the thing that you were looking for, but now you have to ask the right question about it. And and all of these things, um, this is why I think folks, if you haven't listened to it, should listen to the concept development or how yeah, to make yeah, a yeah. concept recording because these different ideas that we're kind of talking about and these different architectural scenarios of like the virtuality, you know, no gravity, this phones, no phones, or all landscapes or whatever, like they all, they're each ideas and they exist at different like, levels within the hierarchy of thought that has to go into a project and so you'll find ones that are let's say nearer the top which is more like just an expression of something and you'll find ones that are deeper down which are like a fundamental like i would say the 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 term hybridity right or fluidity as like the ones i brought up earlier um like those as ideas are way 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 at the base right and you will find that there are things in in the in a thesis or in a paper or whatever that are purely expressions of those uh, ideas. Sometimes those um, expressions are way at the very surface. I guess it's the final expression, and sometimes they're further, further down and much closer to the core concept. I think it's important to be mindful of of that proximity to the core ideas and and every project will have a core will have will be will be focused around or powered by some core principles um i i think to um to kind of answer the question of how do you develop an architecture how do you find the topic what, your topic the yeah. topic of your thesis there is not really a recipe there is not really a shortcut on like mm. how to get there um, you know, that there is different ways that we've explored and mentioned, but I don't think there is one clear path that you could take to get to that. Yeah, it's a, it's it, the beginning is sloppy, right? Because it could be you don't really figure. If, okay, first of all, right as a kind of a summary, um, if you if you really can't figure it out, uh, to whatever whatever degree that means, right? Um, then go with the teacher that you think is going to be the best fit. And then once you start in day one, or maybe you use the summer, you start 
you start the process. You start writing. Like I, like for I don't know how other people work, but for me, I have to write. I write, 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 write. Always put all these ideas down and find the connections and be like, why is this interesting? What does this mean? E, um, you know, the f yeah. It could often also be um, you notice an issue, mm -hmm. you know, or you are interested into something. Let's say I don't know, you're interested into uh, landscape, mm -hmm. right? That's not architecture, and you notice that there is a big issue, a very specific issue in landscape about I don't know rocks falling down from a hillside, right? And it, to say that it could really come from anything, yeah, as long as you're interested in it and you noticed your interest mm -hmm. that's it again you can extrapolate from that yeah. you know then if it's more interesting or less interesting well yeah not all of them are going to be like you know grade a uh, level of ideas right but you kind of have to write them you have to write them down that's the other thing all of those ideas and interests you have to write it down if you're thinking you're going to get to your thesis topic just by like thinking about it in your head you're not like you have to put those words on paper you have to put them next to each other you mm -hmm. have to like keep adding to it, move them around, move them aside, like select maybe the five best. Like you have to sort through your interests and your ideas. And that doesn't happen like mentally, you know, in an abstract space. It needs to be like in front of your eyes. Yeah, uh, that's great. And the, what I typically do actually, I, writing in a Word document is fine, but maybe for what you're describing, I will always have trays. For me, it's, yeah. it's beauty, it's hyper specific. It's white, 12 inch trays. <laughs> And a straight edge, you know, a scale that I can use to rip off trace cleanly. And I have a black Pentel pen, the felt tip. That's it. And maybe there's like three colored markers. And I write down all of these ideas that you just try to put bubbles around them. I draw lines. And um, it's just like a mess of things and like the rocks tumbling down the hillside, right? That would be something I'd put down. And I would, as you said, you unpack. You yeah. unpack like, why is that and unpack in different dimensions. Why is that interesting? What implications does it have? Is it safety? Is it is it a financial thing? Is it a government funding thing? Is it a respect for the landscape we don't have thing? Is it a critique on like we're cutting roads for hillsides? Why are we doing that? Is it about um, the global warming or I don't know climate change? Right? I don't know if that's the case, but this is whatever. I all that there. Then I go to another thing I'm interested in. I do the same thing, and at some point things are going to overlap. Yeah, it's almost like you're doing detective work on your own personality, on your yeah. own interests. You know, Again, and, and that's why it's the same as it, the projects. It, it's it, it's just another project. Yeah, it's just another project, and maybe you know the start is you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So with that 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 sketch pad trace that I described, I also just because of experience now, I see how. Because the rocks, go, you know, the 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 what do you call it? rock slides, mm -hmm. is a um, is like a scene, is like a very uh, surface level final scene that I'm observing, right? And I'm trying to unpack or understand the sub layers behind, underneath as to why I'm interested or what's happening, and that's where the further, let's see. The further you unpack or the further down you go, if you depending on how you visualize this, that's where you start to get to keywords such as like fluidity or hybridity, in, in my case, not for the rocks, or I don't know, safety or something else, right? So I will use those more core concepts when they when they reveal themselves as being the underlying continuity. And that becomes a base from which I work off of to understand things in, in a certain sense. It's very similar to like when you're when when when, when ar you know, architects are using diagrams to explain really what's happening with the project, and using a diagram in the architectural process, design process, to understand what something could become. It's sort of, uh, sort of like, you know, a, a, a mug. You look at a mug that we have on the table. It has, it says Paris and Tokyo on it. It has a certain form. It's made of ceramic. It was because it was mass produced of that sense, that way, certain size and shape or whatever. It's, a, it's, it's this final thing. If I stare at the thing and someone asks me to make a mug, I might make the same mug because I've stared at it. If I understand the idea of mug and I unpack it to mean, okay, what does that mean? Well, it's just a thing to hold beverage. And maybe there's another another um, criteria of thing that hold hot beverage. Well, then a mug can become any kind of shape, size, and form to a certain degree, right? 
it's the project thinking, but now you're thinking of yourself sort of as the project, I think has to take place. And so literally writing stuff down, I think that's a good suggestion. I think also, obviously, you can go back and look at your previous work. That's also something too. And it's not even so much about looking at the work, again, the aesthetics of it. It's probably more about the ideas or not even the ideas of the project. It's more like what were the things that were really like making your brain itch at that <laughs> time, you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that feeling like there's something there and it has, wasn't resolved and maybe I couldn't address it. Or maybe it was, I had to like kind of suppress it because I didn't have time to think about it or it wasn't appropriate for the studio when we're focusing on X, Y, or Z that wasn't related to that. And then, um, rely on your teacher who's hopefully good. <laughs> 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 I think you know like the 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 writing down it sounds primal and and like okay great I mean you know which have iPads and iPhone like why am I writing stuff down with a pen no truly you have to write stuff down with a pen you have to pin that stuff all over your walls you have to look at it every day not stare at it necessarily but you have to be surrounded by it all the time because you just by seeing you 10 minutes a day, you're going to think about it. Maybe a new idea is going to come out. And like, you got to get the, the, the thinking juice going mm -hmm. and keep going. And, and anytime you just like, you know, don't, don't look at it. Or like, if you, and it's like anything that like you spend, you know, like four, four days not doing something, you go back. Well, it's hard. You forgot where you left off. Like the chain has been broken, right? And I'm not saying you have to work on it 12 hours every day, but like you have to at least look at it once a day, every day. Yeah. Yes. And um, the, I think that maybe the last thing I just quickly mentioned is, you know, you described when, when you graduated, there was this other student who like didn't have a thesis, but they got good Still marks or whatever. It bothers me to this day. Um, Coming up with the thesis, even a lightweight one, you know, as a fifth year, is a really difficult thing. And if you don't achieve it, and in the end, it's not crystal clear as like a perfect, you know, two sentence thesis statement, and you didn't get there, it doesn't mean you, 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 I guess it means technically you did fail, but, but don't view it as a complete failure. Because again, it's more about going through this, this fairly truthful, going through a truthful process. I'm with yourself. And that is the core value from an educator's perspective. It, it also, I, I suppose I say this because don't be surprised if at the end of it, if you, are, if you are a person who has the ability to perceive the difference between an actual thesis argument and one that's not a thesis argument, um, don't be surprised if out of 100 students, only 10% actually have something close to a thesis argument. Again, that doesn't mean that it's not worthwhile to try and achieve it, even if you don't get there. Yeah, and I mean, looking at also what a thesis is on a mas at a master level, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm confused with yeah, my masters. words. Master level, do they produce a project? For architecture, yeah, there's a project they component. Do. They do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, um, I guess it depends on the school, but yeah, there would, there would be some kind of project to like, yeah. But they have like what a couple of years to do that. Depends. You know, so I would say you're right. Um, you know, whatever thing ends up being at the, on the final day, that's what it is. You know, and uh, <laughs> don't get hung up on it if you feel like you didn't do it as well as maybe you wish you did. Or yeah. You know, like it's important to recognize it that you didn't do it the way you you wanted, or maybe it could have been better, but. <laughs> There's going to be so many more projects in your life when you're going to feel like that, <laughs> you know, that, um, that, that, you know, it's what it is. Or I would actually say the opposite is that if you have the opportunity afterwards to finish it, <laughs> then finish it. And that's what I ended up doing um, unofficially. Did you? No, what I ended up doing was using a competition uh, that was actually related uh, in sight to the project oh, right. and using that as a framework Right, and as a as a, a organization organizational process structure to finish it out, and then I did went and went on and did like a paper. So like there there, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like don't let. I just moved depressed. to New York after I graduated from but Paris. So I was like, you know what, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 also, you know, 
likely if you're deep diving, these things are going to stay with you for a long period of time. And yeah, I've often I've often thought now this is a casual. Call, I've often thought like, are the 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 ideas from thesis for a, a, a graduate do they stay with them because they are the one out of like five true things that that is that is a, a true 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 interest right at a person's core or is it because that's the only time that a person was allotted a full year almost um to truly be free and that's what came about so if i had another nine months or ten months to be truly free would, free would i find another set of problems that's completely different um who's to know you know, since I've already done that one year in the past, so I'm now who I am. So I've, I don't know what that. I don't know what that means. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, so yeah, does does thesis have value? I think so. Can you do it right? Yes. Can you do it wrong? Yes. Can you attempt it but still uh, get m the majority of the reward of it? Yeah, for sure. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Um, maybe one last, maybe one last thing. I feel like it's a very personal. Thesis is very personal in the sense of like how much it takes of you to do it, um, and the yeah. interests might come from a very personal place. That said, I don't think that the expression of thesis or the project should be personal. What does that mean? I don't know. No, come on. I don't. Well, I mean, you're not designing. You're not doing it for yourself, mm -hmm. right? Like it's coming from you. It's maybe a deep down about who you are, but you are not doing the thesis for yourself. You're doing it for the bigger question of what the thesis is about. Right, right. So, do you mean to say that the design, that the validity of the design or the paper is not subjective? Yeah. Okay. Yes, and 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 I think that's kind of a it's it's a hard distinction, but I do I do feel like a lot of times students kind of confuse the two, oh, and the yeah. argument is very much more like their own opinion or their own stand. When really it should be like, well, I looked at A and B, and I came to the conclusion that B is the best answer. You know, yeah, I yeah I agree with that. That, that yeah that that's very important. And honestly, I I also think that if students generally get to fifth year and they're like completely either they don't have a topic in mind or that's not even that's not even so much the case or they just have no they're unable to draw up any kind of idea of what they're remotely interested in or even beyond that they're not even able to like work through some of the things we've described you know i was well, depressed i'm like i don't know what kind of education did you go through the last four years because some of the again some of this process and thinking and the steps it happens in design anyway. It's just that in thesis, it's much more, again, personal, deeper, longer, more intense, but it's still similar, right? It's just much more. Um, so if, if all this is like completely new to you, then I don't know, man. Did you ever have a concept Where before with a project? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's maybe more of a, a critique or, or an observation with education in general, perhaps. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well... Yeah, it's kind of tricky, right? Because I feel like you could be very much not involved in your projects throughout your fourth years. And then come the fifth one and we ask you to be very much involved in what you're doing. So, you know, you know, more like conclusion being like you should be involved in your fourth, in all of your years in school because fifth year would be easier if you're involved versus and, and do the things you have to do. Right versus kind of like cruising and not showing up and not doing stuff, not taking it seriously. Yeah, because thesis is very much serious. Yeah, you could yeah. not take it seriously, but again, like, why do you have to gain by doing that? Well, it's sort of like you're, you're you've been building up these skill sets, right? Not just um, not just production skill sets, but like conceptual thinking skill sets. And then we get the the fifth year. Um, in the case of a capstone, what I would describe is that you're just going to use those exact skill sets to do something really well because you have more time to do it. Uh, whereas thesis, you're, you're, you're using those, you're building on those skill sets, you're going deeper with them, kind of. Especially in the, in the, in the more argumentative side, or the right. thinking side. And um, 
So if you haven't built up that like foundation and done those exercises, when it comes time to like go a further distance of the marathon, let's say, and go take yourself to another level, um, you know, go deeper in the pit or whatever, you won't, you can't, you'd be like, I don't even know what to, I, I can't. Um, and you know, capstone does have its value, but I think I, I, I tend to side with thesis because whatever things you're going to learn in capstone, you're going to learn later on. Anyway, you have like an entire life to learn these things and to do, to do them well. And, um, when thesis though, you, you, you don't have the time and the space later on to, to, to really uncover, um, and hone those conceptual skill sets. And that is, I think what is what will set, set a person apart and whether or not they're successful. Almost in any profession, you know, the ability to 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 gen, to generate a, a profound argument behind something that has depth, right, um, and to say it um, in writing, and then to have it be expressed graphically in a presentation for graphically or in a design, uh, is is more special. Yeah, and I mean, you don't really get to have a critical thinking and a critical position throughout, you know, your first four years of school. You know, most often. Most yeah. often. I mean, you can, but to a very small degree, yeah. um, you know, given the opportunities you have to. So it's it's really, it's it's your only chance to try and test that out before you're out of school. Yeah. And that's also when we talk about this relationship between academia and, and, and the profession. This is how I'm seeing it. Like the two puzzle pieces that yeah, kind of yeah. fit together, right? And they do fit together, Um despite them being different. And so when you use capstone fifth year and you're like, you know, 22 years old and you're trying to do like design development drawings, I'm like, why? What? I mean, yes, to be more hireable, but you know, real quick and regarding all that, um, yes, it, it, your portfolio and the projects you do and you're in school and that stuff will determine the kind of, um, first few jobs you get. But it is all very long distance, you know, the race. And uh, you're talking about the yeah. span of 5, 10, 20 years. Five years out of school, it's not going not gonna to matter where your first works. It's, it's going to matter under the, the, the pace you keep and the outlook. And the things that stay with you, um, again, in terms of thinking conceptually, right? Yeah. The other stuff you can add on easily. Yeah. You can acquire those easily. Yeah. 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 Cool. So I think that's... I think that's the end of the recording. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful. If there's anything that we said that you are confused by, disagree with, or or maybe there are aspects about thesis that we didn't uh, talk about enough and kind of glossed over, then just um, hit us up. They can contact us. Uh, how? Email. Hello, studio. Edo. Hello what? at yeah. Uh We have the hotline 213-222-6950. You can send a text message or leave a voicemail. We're also on most social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Send us some DMs. Instagram, we have like clips and reels that happen almost daily now. We have quotes. We have guest work images. Also, obviously, if you liked this recording, you like work doing then support us and can support us by leaving a review in the apple podcast app and itunes review or you can uh, i think you can rate the show on spotify and they subscribe on youtube and leave comments and share with your friends and all that kind of stuff the more the better as we try to uh, move onward and upward right reaching for the stars reaching for the stars <laughs> okay <laughs> okay thanks everybody for listening and we'll talk to you again next week or sooner bye bye bye